Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, first I want to thank the organizers and Dr. Mohsen for giving this invite. And this is my first visit to Bangladesh, and I'm really in awe with the hospitality and the warmth which we have received from all you people. Really, thanks for that. So for next eight minutes, we will be discussing about peri and post complication of imaging helps. So my most of the slides will be the repetition what earlier speakers have uh, told about that how to approach and most of the complications which we have seen. So rather saying how imaging helps, I would say complications of not using imaging would be a right topic for this that what are the things which we might miss if we don't use the imaging. So we all know or discuss there are different algorithms by IVAS or OCT, MLD, Max to see what are the things which we have to look after. And there have been various studies by Illumin surely showed if you use the imaging, it changes the strategy pre and post PCI among the operators. And this is the basic pre-intervention, during intervention and post procedure, what all we have to look after. So what are the pre-assessment key to avoid during complications? As already mentioned, a separate topic was given for calcific lesions because we know that that's a lesion which is difficult to nail. Second most important is to instant resource mechanism because we know that we will be able to not see the exact etiology, we might not be able to give a good result. And geographical miss and accurate sizing are the most important keys. The PCI strategy troublemakers, if you ask, these are the four troublemakers pre-assessment. If we find these in this our case, we have to be a little worried about. And depending on the morphology, different strategies have been advised that if it's a lipidic, go for a direct stenting or for a calcific, you have to do different devices, both on OCT and IVAS base. So coming to a case, this looks like a simple case of acute coronary syndrome, a 65-year-old lady, our daily case of unstable angina. We did a uh, dilatation by 2 into 10 mm balloon. What we see, there was slow flow, as shown in the earlier case by Dr. Arun also. So we did our IVAS, and if I see our IVAS, there was a highly attenuated plaque, necrotic areas, and a thrombus in this. So if we have done a prior imaging in this case, we would have not done a uh, ballooning in this case and would have done for a direct stenting. So we did a give, uh, IV uh, intracoronary vasodilators, GP2B3 inhibitors, and did a direct stent, not a direct stenting now, but did a stenting, and no post dilatation after that. This was a flow which we achieved, but still a TIMI2 flow, but patient was uh, asymptomatic after this. So direct stenting would have been a better option if I have used a imaging in this case. Another case, similar uh, haziness in the left main. This was a 60-year-old male, short history. There was haziness in the left main in the LED ostia. We thought it may be a thrombus or a calcified nodule, not very clear. So let us, before intervening anything, let us do an imaging in this case. So this was a, a pullback, which we did. And we can clearly see there was an attenuated plaque with ecolysin and an eruptive calcified nodule. So that means now we have to do something we don't have to be very aggressive because as already discussed also that eruptive nodules, they usually respond, but they you are the, in long run, they have an increased risk for development of complications. So we just did a small cutting balloon in this case of a 3 into 10 angioscult and put a stent across it. Did go for any atherectomy device or something. And I didn't have the IVAS with, but it was a good expansion of the IVAS with good MLA which was achieved and a TIMI3 flow. Second most important when the pre-assessment is for the confirming the wire positions when we go for this, and especially in CTOs if we want to do. If the CTO is beyond the occlusion, if you find that there is a true or versus false lumen, this is a very good case if you see, this was where wire was there and it was assumed that it is okay, but if we see the pullback, the pullback we clearly see our IVAS is in the false lumen and the true lumen is in the kidney shape which is present at from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock position. So always try to avoid putting a stent in these cases. What about the peristent assessment? As already told by earlier speakers, that expansion, apposition, dissection, tissue prolapse, these all are very important, and I will not go into detail that what are the things which we have to look because my earlier speakers have already turned. I will just come to a case, which was a routine case which we did. It's a 60-year-old male, unstable angina, one month back, ECG T inversions of V1 to V3, and his angio showed some osteoproximal LED mild disease, and mid LED was a critical 90% lesion. Put a stent across it, did a dilatation, and we found that, okay, it's looking fine, but there was some under expansion in the LED stent. And I dilated with NC of 3.5 into 12 mm balloon. Post dilatation, this was the proximal edge which we found. 
What is this? It's a haziness proximal to the stent. It could be an edge dissection which has led to it. It could be a plaque shift. Or it may be a thrombus because of recent history of non-Q interval MI, 15 days. Or an intramural hematoma. So first and foremost, don't give more injections. You might harm more. Harm more. We did a pullback. I was, this was a stent which we can see. And if we see the landing zone of a stent, angiographically looked normal, but our landing zone was in the disease segment and there was a dissection leading to intramural hematoma in this case. So that means the geographical miss which we did and led to this intramural hematoma. So we had to cover the intramural hematoma. The second overlapping desk was deployed and this was a good final image which we got in this case. Post tinting, sometimes we have look uh, angiographically, some gives very scary pictures. This is a 46 year old lady who came to us with, uh, had a PC of uh, RC in 2070 and came with unstable angina. And if you can clearly see, LA left main was shaft was showing a severe disease. We did a small balloon, our uh, three into 10, and we did a OCT pullback. If you see, this is basically a very high attenuated necrotic plaques with high lipidic content in these cases with no calcification. Deployed a four into 12 mm balloon, uh, sorry, stent. And post left main stenting, were, uh, if you see, there was some haziness under expansion at the proximal part. So should we go at 4.5 high pressure or should we go for just a uh, low pressure? What does the OCT show? The OCT showed us that this was basically a lipidic plaque which was tissue prolapsing inside the left main stenting. And this prolapse was causing about more than 30% uh, of the luminal stenosis which was irregular. So rather in tissue prolapse, we have to be very careful. We should not oversize and never go for high pressure balloon dilatation in these cases. We just gave a gentle massaging to this lipidic plaque, about four into 10 mm at eight atmosphere. And this was the post NCOCT run, which we found that the tissue prolapse has significantly decreased and it was less than 10% of the an effective lumen area, which we got more than eight. So this was the final result, which we got post uh, NC in this case. What about the imaging for the instant restenosis? Instant restenosis important is imaging is very important because there are different mechanisms of ISRs and you have to treatment strategy depends on this. So this was a male who had a stenting 16 years back and now presented with recent onset angina and LED osteo was total occluded. We passed the wire, Sion went easily. We didn't use to a very high uh, wire. And when we did the IVAS, IVAS pullback clearly showed that this, there was a distal stent edge was okay, but there was a calcium which was present in the lower part and there was fibrolipidic plaque and the osteal LED was also showing calcium. So we have to deal with this calcium, we cannot keep it like that. So we did a cutting balloon, high pressure, and post cutting balloon, we did an IVAS, good cuts were demonstrated and we got deployed a stent in this case. This was the post NC post stent, which was a good MLA in this case. Second case in which you don't want to do very high cutting balloon is a, this is a case if you see this was RCA ISR and we did an OCT in this case if you see there was classical TCFS in the distal edge, there was high lipidic plaque, there was rupture and there was no significant any new, uh, new intimal hyperplasia or fibrotic lesion, predominantly new atherosclerosis. So we didn't do much in high pressure balloons or uh, cutting balloon in this case. So we just put a cover, uh, sorry, long stent covering over a 4.3 into 48, and this was the post result. Post uh, PCI OCT was straight.